Hey guys, it's Aislinn and in today's video we're going to be dyeing a wig and I'm going to be dyeing the wig using a method I've never tried before. It's called like the water coloring method or something along those lines. I've never done this before so I'm not really sure exactly what I'm doing. It's going to be an experience. I've heard this method makes dyeing wigs so much easier than hand painting color on. That takes me hours and hours to do so I'm excited to try a different type of dyeing today. I got a new VP fashion wig that I'm really really excited about. You guys know my favorite type of wigs I've ever tried are from VP fashion. This wig is actually a new one that I haven't tried yet. It's a free parting wig and it's 16 inches. So basically when you have a free parting wig, you can see this whole top horseshoe section of the wig is all lace. So that means you can basically part it anywhere throughout that area and it's gonna look super, super natural because they have lace covering this whole section. So if you normally wear a side part and you like it better on yourself, you can always part it to the side or on this side or you can just have it down the middle. The last wig that I got from VP Fashion is this one which we dyed together and this one is a middle part wig so as you can see there's not as much lace covering this whole entire section it's specifically designed just to be a middle parting wig straight down the middle which works perfectly for me because I normally wear a middle part anyway but if you are someone that likes to have a side part I would definitely recommend the free parting wig if you like to switch your part around this wig will give you more options and the other wig I own from VP fashion is a full lace wig so the whole whole entire inside of the cap is lace. There are no wefts. As you can see back here, you don't see any of those lines where the wefts would be. It's all lace. So basically this wig allows you to part straight down the middle anywhere back here and it looks super super natural just like your scalp no matter where you're parting it. So that's the difference between the three wigs. All of them work great for me because I do have a middle part but like I said if you like to switch your part around I would definitely recommend trying the free lace part. This wig is 613A which is like their dyeable wigs so they come pre-lightened to this nice pale platinum color and then you can dye them, tone them, do whatever you want to them. They lift it to such a nice canvas so that way you can color it whatever you want. So today we're going to be dyeing this using the watercolor method. I do have quite a few wigs and every time I get a new one I always dye it bright colors. I'm always dyeing it rainbow or vivids and I really want a wig that is a natural color. Sometimes when I have colored hair on myself I go to an event or something like that and I want natural color. I want a blonde or a silver shade. So today we're going to be dyeing this wig silver. I have three shades from Kiss Hair Colors that are silver. This one is Mystic Silver, this one is Platinum, and this one is Gunmetal Gray. I did swatch all three of these. Here are the three swatches. This one is Mystic Silver, which is the lightest one. The middle one right here is Platinum, which is the medium tone. And then this one right here is the Gunmetal. So I'm probably going to stick with this first option right here. It's the lightest, and I'm going for a silvery platinum shade. So I think I'm going to go ahead and use the Mystic Silver. I do want to try these colors straight out of the container not using the water method because they look like they would be really good silver and gray toned dyes. They have that purplish undertone to them so I know that they would work really well at creating like gray and silver tones. I definitely want to try these shades by themselves. Maybe on my hair this summer we can do a platinum gray and silver hair. I really want to try them on their own because they look like they're beautiful shades with nice undertones. Most of the time I have my hair dyed bright, so that's another reason. I just want a wig that's a natural shade so that way I can pop it on if my hair's colored and I just want a natural hair color for a day. So let's go ahead and get into the hair dyeing portion of the video. I'm really excited to try this method. I've heard it's super, super quick, super easy. It takes like 15 minutes or less. I will say this works way better if you have a thinner consistency dye. Kiss Colors and Adore are the two brands I've seen most people use when trying this method. A dye like Eero Eero isn't gonna work as well because it is thicker, so it's harder to mix into the water. If you have a dye that's already thinner and a little bit more runny, it's gonna be easier to work that into the water. So let me bring over my water and we'll get dyeing this wig. I have this bowl of really, really hot water. I feel like it would work best if the water's hot so that way the hair absorbs some of that dye. So I just fill 
filled this bowl with really, really hot water. And now we're gonna start adding the dye to the bowl until I get the desired color I'm looking for. I'm just gonna take this Mystic Silver and start adding a little bit in at a time. Okay, so here we are. I have just squirted some dye in here and I have this whisk. So I'm just going to whisk this all together until everything's really blended. Having the water hot also helps the color absorb in easier. So this is definitely not dark enough. Let's go ahead and add some more. Mystic Silver. And we're just gonna whisk all of this together. Okay, so it's definitely getting darker. I think I'm actually gonna use a second darkest shade. I'm gonna go in with this platinum color and add some in there. Since it's darker, I won't have to add as much. There we go. Wow, that's working a lot better. I should have just started using the darker shade from the very beginning. Okay, I think that this is a good color. So we're gonna start with this and see what it does to the wig. All right, here's the wig before. So let's go ahead and dip it in here and see what we get. It's definitely toning the wig a little bit, which is exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm just gonna continue to dip in and dip out. Wow, this is working really good. You can see the water has lightened up quite a bit since dipping the wig in a few times. So I'm just going to add a little bit more dye in here and then continue to dip the wig. I'm just gonna add a little bit of this gunmetal in here, just a little bit. Everything's good and blended together. The water looks like a nice color. Right now, the wig is a nice pale blonde shade. I don't mind if it turns silver, so I'm gonna go ahead and dunk it in this mixture a couple more times trying to make it more of that silvery white shade and you can see it turning to a beautiful silvery color here's what the wig looks like now you can tell it is a nice silvery blonde color so i'm going to go ahead and blow dry the wig and style it and i'll be back to show you guys how i apply the wigs i'm really impressed with this method it worked really well okay i'm back i just blow dried and straightened the wig here is how it turned out look at this beautiful white silver color this turned out so much better than i thought it would it's literally a perfect silver white shade and i am in love with the color it's literally perfect and this process was so so simple there are so many different methods you can use when doing the water dye you can do ombres very very easily there are so many other videos on youtube showing all the different methods you can use when you do water coloring you use a lot less dye when you do the watercolor method and also it's not patchy when you're coloring each section sometimes you can have areas that grab the dye more or you're not saturating enough with the watercolor method, it's all even and all saturated, the exact same. It just makes coloring wigs so much easier. I would definitely recommend you try it if you have a wig at home you're wanting to dye. This was the easiest and best method I've tried so far. So now I'm just gonna show you guys how I apply wigs. There are so many different ways you can apply wigs. I'm just gonna show you how I apply them most of the time. I'm just gonna start by braiding my hair. If you don't know how to braid, just try and slick your hair back as flat to your head as possible so that way you don't have like bulges underneath the wig cap and these braids don't have to be perfect obviously no one's gonna see them it's just to get the hair out of the way so that way the wig cap lays nicely on your scalp I'm just gonna take some bobby pins and pin each braid around the side of my head okay so here are the braids let me turn around and show you what it looks like from the back now I'm gonna go in with my wig cap and this one is nude, so it's gonna match the color of my skin. Like I said, there are so many different ways to apply wigs. If I was wearing this for a really long time, I would wanna glue everything down. Most of the time when I'm wearing wigs, I'm only wearing them for like an hour or less if I'm running to the store or something like that and I just wanna throw something on because my hair looks like a mess underneath. But if I am wearing a wig for long periods of time, then I go ahead and take the extra time to glue everything down and secure the wig to my head. So now I'm just putting the wig cap on. I take this rat tail comb. I just like to use this comb to tuck all of the hairs into the wig cap. 
While I was styling it, I cut off all the lace around the hairline and around the nape of the neck. I like to use some small scissors to do this. It just makes it more precise so you're not gonna accidentally cut some hair off. So before you put the wig on, you're gonna wanna adjust it to your head size. Inside VP Fashion's wig, they do include this adjustable strap right here at the bottom so you can make it tighter or looser depending on how big or small your head is. They also have clips along the hairline to secure it to your head. I'm gonna go ahead and slide these adjustable straps over one so that way it fits a little bit more snug. If you're not gonna take the time and glue down your wig cap and glue down the wig to your head, it is a good idea to make the wig a little bit tighter so that way there's less chance of it sliding off your head and it's gonna grab to your head a little bit better. Then I just take the wig and flip it on my head and then I'll start adjusting everything. Gluing everything down does make it look a little bit more realistic. I do have a full video of me gluing down a VP Fashion wig. I'll leave a link to that video up here if you wanna see the other method of how I wear my wigs. I do wanna style the wig today. I don't just wanna wear it straight and flat. I wanna put some of it up. So I wanna leave a few of these pieces just framing my face like this. So I'm just gonna take a little horseshoe section so now that I have it styled the way I want, I'm just gonna take some foundation that I use to match my skin tone and I'm gonna put this in the part line. And because I'm wearing most of it up, I only have to put it right here in this very little front section. Then I just go in with my fingers and kind of blend everything out. So here is the wig. I think styling it definitely makes it look more natural instead of just putting the wig on and wearing it straight down. Adding some sort of style to it makes it look a little bit more realistic. I'm in love with this color. Definitely recommend the watercolor method. And also every single time I get a wig, once I wash it, it thickens in size. Like literally the hair becomes like twice as thick. Let me turn around and show you what the back looks like. I can't wait to try the watercolor method again in the future, maybe doing ombre or some other type of techniques. It definitely made the hair dyeing process so much easier when you're dyeing a wig. It takes way less time. You don't have to worry about your wig stand falling over or rocking back and forth. It just simplified literally every aspect. And on top of it, you're using way less dye than you would normally use if you're dyeing every single section. The color is a lot more even. You can make it as light or as dark as you want, depending on how many times you dip the wig into the color. I really love the length of this wig too. It's not too long, not too short. It's a really great medium length. I will leave a link to this wig and and VP Fashion social media in the description down below. I do have a coupon code with them, which will also be in the description box. Anytime I need a wig, I always go to VP Fashion. I love this wig so much, oh my gosh. For my first time using the watercolor method, I think it turned out so good. I'm very impressed with myself. That is all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to check out my Instagram. The link to that is in the description down below. I post way more of my everyday life on there. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I love you guys so much. And until next time, guys, stay weird. Goodbye. I mean